So for Christmas, my brother gave me, a, this is upside down. For Christmas, my brother gave me Sunshine Town, which is one of those little like things that you put in between your books on your bookshelf. So it's like one of those little things you put in between your books on your bookshelf, but you have to build it. So I'm going to build this and I'm also going to be walking you through um, my yearly survey. I saw it on Gabby Reads' channel and I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. And also like I can talk about more books than I talked about in my favorites of the year, um, which I put out a couple days ago. So I'm excited to create and I will lower the camera and go through everything that I have read or not everything, but whatever it is. Well, it's so bright out. Oh my God. Maybe I should like, no, it's, it's like way too bright out. Okay, here we go. So I was under the impression <clears throat> that I could finish this entire video, like talking about everything in one of the first clips that you saw here. Uh, this clip is, you can see I'm talking. Uh, that was untrue. This took me about 16, 17 hours to complete this thing. So I'm just going to tell you the reading survey uh, through a voiceover because I was a little hectic while I was talking and recording myself because I was like, what's even going on here? Okay, so I read 72 books this year. The first question is, how many books did you read? And it says, do you meet, did you meet your reading goal? Um, no, I didn't. But according to Goodreads, I did because I changed that goal. I do that every year to make sure that I actually meet it. So I will lower that goal and I am not ashamed. Uh, most read genre, technically graphic novel, but I don't want to count that as a genre. Um, it, it's like a type of book, like a format of book to me. I, I don't know. It counts, but it's just like, I want to know, like, is it contemporary? Is it fantasy? You know, so it was fantasy, which was kind of surprising to me. I actually don't know what fantasy books I was reading. Um, longest and shortest books. The longest was Witch Elm by Tana French. That was 528 pages. The shortest was a book that I will not name here because it was like 40 pages and there were two sentences per page. It doesn't count. Basically a graphic novel or pictures. Uh, so, and I don't count graphic novels as like shortest book because they count for things. Okay. Trust me. They just don't count for these things. So um, that was Comfort Me With Apples for uh, 103 pages. <clears throat> Favorite book published in 2022, Unlikely Animals. That is a wild one. This girl who uh, was born like a healer uh, from Vermont, she moved to California, goes back to Vermont to, um, as her father has like brain tumors and stuff. The whole book is told in the perspective of the ghosts in the cemetery of the town, and it's just the wildest thing. Favorite debut book in 2022? Probably The Town of Babylon. Uh, this one was, I just read it recently for my book club. This guy's going home to, once again, an ailing father. Um, and it's also his 20 year high school graduation, and he's just kind of like, coming to terms with like uh talking to these people like he was never the cool one you know all this stuff um so that that was a really good one and i didn't make many debuts this year next is favorite book not published in 2022 <laughs> three body problems is in lieu so good so good aliens science fiction uh what is human like like what does humanity mean what do people mean what does like what is the future uh, so good um a book that lived up to the hype heaven by miko kawakami uh it's two middle schoolers it's set in japan that they don't have any friends then they find each other but it turns out it hurts more to lose a friend when you now know what a friend is like and it was really sad and depressing and i loved it 
a book that did not live up to the hype, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. That um, that book, I, I don't like it when people are nice to each other in like a romance. Like, no thank you, stupid. Like, I mean, if it's your cup of tea, it's your cup of tea, but it's not my thing. Um, a book that felt like the biggest accomplishment. I would say a fatal thing happened on the way to the forum. This is a book about ancient Rome, but it almost felt like gossiping about ancient Rome. Um, it's so good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's an accomplishment to me because I don't usually read nonfiction, especially like historical or, you know what I mean, history based nonfiction. So that was crazy. Favorite character is Clive Starling from Unlikely Animals. He's the father with the brain tumor and he can talk to animals or like he's talking to animals and stuff. And it's like kind of has like a Dr. Doolittle, uh, like it's uh, inspired a little bit by. I, I don't know. This book is so crazy. Least favorite character is Pun Pun from Goodnight Pun Pun series. It's a manga series I've been reading and he's like the worst person ever. He, he like really sucks, uh, but I love the series so much. He's going through a lot and I don't like him. Um, on the last book now. Most shocking book slash moment. Uh, I would say the reveal from Verity, but I, I don't read, like I read thrillers and mysteries, but I don't read that many thrillers and mysteries. And I, I felt like it was a good feel personally. Um, I read Colin Hooper for the first time this year, at, along with a lot of other people, and I liked it. Um, the next one is Local Woman Missing. That was also a really good reveal. Like, I was like, wait, you, she what? You, you what? He what? You know? Um, next up is Favorite Couple slash OTP. Firstly, I would say uh, Faye from You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. I won't say who she ends up with, but it's just so sweet and they respect each other so much. And that's what I love. Respect. It's a beautiful thing. And then the other couple would be Linus Baker and Arthur Parnassus from uh, House and Cerulean Sea. Oh, they're such beauties. I love them. I love them. Um, they, they like find and make the best out of each other, you know? So the book written, the best bit written book you read in, uh, this year, that would be a visit from the goon squad. I think Jennifer Egan does such a good job writing a, um, composite novel where it's like a short story collection, but everything kind of ties together and characters reappear. And you go from like, there's this one short story where someone looks at this picture and is like, oh, that's him on this one vacation. The next short, short story takes you into that vacation. So good. Um, book you pushed the most people to read in 2022? I didn't mean to, but I felt like I had a lot of people message me and I feel like a lot of people were pushed with by this or like in general to read this one was Colleen Hoover's It Ends With Us. I did like a reading vlog because I'd never read any of her books. So I like did a taste test sort of thing. I read three of her books and this was one of them. And a lot of people were like, oh my God, you've convinced me. And I was like, dang, didn't, didn't know I was doing that, but. I'm happy for you. Okay, this next one, I, for some reason, I wrote these down and I thought it said favorite color of the year, and I was like, uh, I don't, I don't know, green, but <laughs> that didn't make sense. Anyways, uh, favorite cover of the year. That would be Bliss Montage. Um, those oranges and the way that the cover ties into the actual short story collection, really cool. But like the texture, the oranges, it's such a cool cover. Um, favorite book adaptation. So uh, I watched uh, Station Eleven, the miniseries. I read Station Eleven a number of years ago. Really want to reread it. And Emily St. John McDowell. And this miniseries, I watched it multiple times this year. It was so beautiful. Like, what a wonderful miniseries. I, I was enamored. I was enamored. Uh, what book made you cry the most? 
prey, unlikely animals. I feel like not many books made me cry this year. Um, maybe because I was crying at my own life. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Um, what book? <laughs> unlikely animals. Um, yes, I definitely cried during this book. It was, it was a really, it was funny. It was weird. It was beautiful. Um, the book that made me the most depressed, though, would be Black Hole by Charles Burns. Charles Burns? Yes. It is a graphic novel that follows these teenagers and an STD that is just horrific, and it is it's scarring. It's a scarring book. Um, yep. What book made you laugh the most? Probably Happy Go Lucky by David Sedaris. David Sedaris always makes me laugh. He is a silly goose and I love him so much. And he is the funniest person in the entire world. So just uh, hope that you know that. A uh, new favorite author you discovered this year is Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's not that I didn't know who he was. It's that I hadn't read any of his books yet and I am a sucker for astrophysics and physics in general I really love it and I, <laughs> I read a couple of his books this year and I was like you are wonderful um, I will read more you know <laughs> I cannot wait next up is what is the best nonfiction book you read this year and of course I did not just give you one I gave you three and the first one's cosmic queries but Neil the Tyson because obviously it's like he's answering different questions people have had over time regarding um astrophysics and stuff and then the next one is gory details this one is like the dark side of science and it answers weird questions and like gross science question biological questions like the things that make you go Ugh, and <laughs> it's just so good um and then lastly is cultish because that was really interesting reading about different cults and like you know you don't you don't really think of say like multi-level marketing as a cult or at least i don't like off the off the get-go i'm not like you know multi-level marketing that cult um yeah so <laughs> i don't know uh, that is it for my reading survey, and here is the ending, and now you can see to my little cute little book nook thing that I built. I hope you enjoyed watching this and listening to me chat. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this, just so we all know. Uh, I, I'm gonna buy a new one. Like, I, I meant to buy another one yesterday. And I didn't get around to it, and now I'm like, you need to purchase that because it's so cool. And I have Amazon gift cards right now. So I'm like, let's do it. Um, yeah, so that is about it. Uh, just <laughs> enjoy looking at it some more because it is such a cutie.